Breakthrough time. Hallelujah. Why not echo with me? Testimony time. And that shall be your own testimony too in Jesus' name. Quickly come forward if you hear your name to share your testimony. Monday Annie. Monday Annie. Nancy J. Gadzama. Nancy J. Gadzama. Omolara Badmos. Omolara Badmos. Blessing Desmond. Blessing Desmond. As they come, let's listen to this testimony. It's titled, Married Just After Four Months of Prophecy. Bishop, I want to testify to the glory of God. I watched your live your lives single service from Goshen this year from bedroom and on my phone in Ghana. I prayed, sang, and danced even when people thought I was going mad. I wrote the date I wanted to get married. To the glory of God, my partner came from the U.S. in less than four months after the service. We are legally married. This is miracle because he told me point blank that it was impossible for him to visit me this year. We talked about, about only visit, not even an engagement. God turned it around. Thank you so much for your prayers. Please share these testimonies with others who are still believing in God for partners. Mrs. T, hallelujah. Please come forward. Your name and straight to the point what God has done for you. Exceeding grace. My name is Monday Ani. I joined this commission on August this year. After Bishop met us in our area where we normally drink and smoke. So he spoke to us all about God. After then, he now asked for the people that will join, that will come to service the next Sunday. And I came out. After the service, he asked for the people that will go to Wobi class. I raised up my hand. After our graduation of our Wobi class, he asked for, for the people that don't have a job. He now gave us a job. I come to give a glory to God for what God has done for my life for the past 15 years. I've been smoking, drinking. But this is my foremost now. I've not been smoking, I've not been drinking. I give God the glory. Hallelujah. You're sure you're clapping for Jesus. Clap some more for him. Amen. Exceeding grace. My name is Nancy J. Gazama. I joined Christ with this commission at Meiduguri, August 2006. But since then, I got married 2012, and I was occasional. At the cost of my night with the king early hours of yesterday, after the blood of sprinkling, I felt something in me just came out. Actually, it was from my neck to the heart, and it just disappeared. I felt a relief that I've not felt for over five years. Secondly, I had a sore in my throat and on my tongue for, since 2010. And I just felt the pains have disappeared, and I can't feel anything again. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's a faithful God. Exceeding grace. I'm here. I, uh, Mrs. Omalara Badmos. My name is Mrs. Omalara Badmos. I'm here this morning to testify what God has done in my life. Since last week, this last month, October, I'm not feeling well at all. Something devil moved inside my head to leg with pains, full pains. I came last week. I can't see one of our pastors. They pray for me and give me anointing to drink. He told me, say, I should go. I will return, I will return with my testimony. That prayer and fasting three days, I join, I pray, I fast. I took communion Wednesday, Thursday. That Fiji, immediately when they spray blood, just two seconds, the thing, something moved inside my body. Since that time, I received my ear. Hallelujah. After the blood of sprinkling, the strange moving object disappeared. Exceeding grace, my name is Blessing Desmond. I've come to give glory to, to God who has done all things for me. I left my job 2012, and I went back this year, September. I just made a phone call, and my boss said, you can come back and work. I didn't just go back there to work. It's not even up to three months. 
have been promoted to be the manager. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All this happened because I left, I, I was a sanctuary member. So after I gave given birth, I wasn't attending again. But when I came back again, it wasn't up to a month. My, my job was restored, not just job, and I was promoted. Praise Hallelujah. For all of these testimonies, why not put those hands together for Jesus and give him the loudest shout of praise. Praise God. Let's lift up holy hands before the Lord. Worship his majesty. Exalt his name. He is king of kings and the Lord of lords. Worship before his throne. He deserves all the glory, all the praise, all the honor, all the majesty. Worship him. Raise your voice on high. Raise your voice of thanks. Humbly bow before him this morning. Give him the glory due to him. Give him the glory due unto him. Give him the glory due unto him. Give him the glory due unto him. No one like him. There is no one like him. Worship your majesty. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised and adored. So we lift up holy hands in one accord. Blessed be the name, oh, blessed be the name of You are holy, holy, you are holy, King of kings, Lord of lords, you are holy. Holy Lord, holy, and you are holy. King of kings, Lord of lords, I worship you. Sing, you are holy, holy, you are So we lift up, so we lift up holy hands in one accord. We are singing, singing, blessed be your name, oh, blessed be your name, oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. So lift up, so we lift up holy hand in one accord. Oh, singing, singing, blessed. Oh, blessed. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Worship him again, give him the glory due to him. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord forever and ever and ever. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we are prayed. Encounter today for he sent his word and healed them and delivered them. Receive healing, receive deliverance by the word of the Lord right now. Father, I'm set for my precious encounter this morning as your word comes to me. As your word comes to me, deliver me from every filthiness, deliver me from every uncleanness, deliver me, O oh Lord, from sin, from sickness, from sin, from affliction, from sin, from poverty, from sin, from failure. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we are prayed you are blessed in jesus wonderful name will you give my jesus a big hand and please take your seat exceeding grace strange acts that remains whose portion in the multiplied form that is whose portion in a pre measure whose portion is that you are blessed one of the essence of the pre encounter service is to mobilize for the release of the balance of your blessing because Shiloh 2014 will not come to meet any of your desires for 2014 or met they must be met I said they must be met I said they must be met and God's word shall be confirmed in that regards in the name of Jesus we had a great time at the week of spiritual emphasis three days of prayer and fasting powerful moment with diverse testimonies all of it culminated in the one night with the king with diverse testimonies among which is what you have heard been shared this morning five years of affliction destroyed four years of sore throat problem destroyed one month of strange movement in the body destroyed by the power of god this morning someone here will have a clear testimony to share and if you are that person expecting it say a loud amen i like to also keep advocating the year has not ended all of us still have opportunity to be out winning souls for jesus god rewards people according to their impute god is not blessing me because i'm a pastor or a bishop god is blessing me because i am obeying him and like I've said to you over and over again, if you do what I do, you will see what I see. You had another testimony this morning. I took it over myself to go to the neighborhood to win souls for Jesus. Met those young men where they were drinking, smoking, jumping, dancing to evil music. So they could be arrested to come and be dancing in the house of God. What a joy. You had the testimony again this morning. All the wasted years, 15 years of smoking and drinking, terminated by the power of God, and now serving the Lord full of freshness. The face you saw today was not the face. It was four months ago. Fresh now. It's good serving Jesus. It's sweet following Jesus. What am I saying? This week you must be out to go and win muscles for Jesus. Be out. God is blessing me. Oh. He's really blessing me. I am eating the fruit of my labor for his kingdom. He's blessing me every day. And may you be a partaker of the same blessing. Don't feel like a big man somewhere. You think it is small, small boys that are winning souls for Jesus. No. Be all out in your neighborhood. Somebody somewhere needs you. May you be the one that God will use to help them out in the name of Jesus. Shout hallelujah. 
let me also quickly say this from the testimony you have had another testimony this morning if god is blessing you here please remain here i'm sure you know that that is not to advocate that you must be in this church but it is simple wisdom if god is blessing you here don't just remain here get rooted here only a fool will see where he's been blessed and be carrying his leg on around the places this lady said i was in this church i was even a sanctuary keeper but i left and everything left you see when you leave a house the blessing of the house leaves you because blessings are allotted to families if a child leaves the family and said he is no longer interested in that family he will go without the blessing like the prodigal son the prodigal son left his father's house nothing tampered with the father but everything tampered with him he wasted all his resources until there was no more food to eat he quickly returned back home and that lady said when i returned back within one month the job which i lost i got it back just by a phone call because of the influence of the house to which she belongs if god is blessing you here abide here i will never advocate for anyone to be in church it's not my culture it's not my nature i've never begged anyone to be in the church never in my life but it is wisdom for you to learn from what you are hearing stay in the place where god is blessing you don't let the devil put any kind of offense inside you i used to tell people humorously you go to work every day they offend you yet the following day you wake up and you're going there why will you say you are offended in the church and leave the church your house is only a fool that will not return to his house because he's been offended this is your father's house the blessing of god is here with you may you not miss it again i say may you not miss it again the prodigal son was enticed out of his house by his friends what are you doing there come out what are you doing there come out he followed them he finished everything they left him alone until he returned that's why the bible says return to me and i will return to you malachi chapter 3 verse 7 return to me and i will return to you until you return god does not return until you return god does not restore return to me and i will restore to you all the years that you have lost return to me and i will restore to you if you leave god or leave the church nobody is at a loss you are the one that is in 100 percent loss that will not be your portion again godliness is profitable unto all things is our theme for the man i like you to lift up your hand and pray against any form of distraction nothing will distract me from the house of the lord nothing will distract me from following jesus i bind every form of distraction speak right now they are everywhere seeking to distract you bind them right now cast out every spirit that seeks to distract you to get you away from following jesus thank you lord in jesus precious name we are praying our series of teaching every sunday is understanding the wonders of godliness if you like understanding the blessings or the rewards or the profits of godliness Our scripture for this theme is first timothy chapter 4 verse 8 specifically but we can take it from verse 7 but refuse profane and old wife's fables and exercise thyself rather unto godliness exercise engage the force of godliness why for bodily exercise profited little but godliness is profitable unto how many things say it 
How many things? And what do I mean? Paul went further. I mean it has a package for you in the life that now is and in that which is to come. That simply means godliness has great blessing not only on us here but in heaven godliness is relevant on us here and relevant in heaven godliness preserves you here and preserves for you a place there you don't live godly and run at a loss what is godliness Godliness is a conscious acknowledgement of one's sins and shortcomings. Every truly godly person is sober. He acknowledges his inadequacies and weaknesses. Every godly person has a living conscience that tells him he's wrong when he goes wrong. Godliness reveals to us our faults, our weakness, our inadequacies. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. It's a clear scripture that shows the thinking of the godly. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. The whosoever confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. David in his open prayer in Psalm 51 from verse 1 began to cry. Have mercy on me, O Lord. According to your loving kindness, according to unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before thee. Godly people detest sin. Godly people don't cover unrighteousness. Godly people are eager to cleanse their sins away from them. A godly man has nothing hiding. A godly man would rather open up himself than to be discovered in his evil. That's what godliness represents. What is godliness? Godliness, furthermore, is a continuous long gain for God. Continuous long gain for God. Psalm 63, verses 1 and 2. O Lord, my God, early thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsted for thee. My flesh longed for thee. In a dry and thirsty land where no water is, to see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Godliness puts in you longing for God. Godliness makes you to desperately emulate God. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1. Be ye followers of God as their children. That's godliness. Godliness is hard following after God. Psalm 63 verse 7, my soul follows hard after thee. That's godliness. Verse 7 and verse 8, my soul follows hard after thee. Thy right hand uphold me. How do you know you are godly? These are the parameters. Is your soul panting after God? Are you desperate about looking for God? If you are not, check it. There is no trace of godliness there. Godliness is setting a spiritual standard for oneself. 
setting a spiritual standard for yourself setting a spiritual goal for yourself you are here but you want to be there setting a goal for yourself spiritual goal philippians chapter 3 from verse 10 down to 14 hear what paul said that i may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sovereign being made conformable unto his death and he went further if by any means i might attain unto the resurrection of the dead not as though i had already attained neither about i'm already perfect but i follow after if that i may apprehend that for which i am apprehended of christ brethren i count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing i do forgetting those things which are behind i am reaching forth unto those things which are before godliness means setting a spiritual mark or a standard for yourself this is why godliness is a long life battle is a long life race for every true believer is a long long life race that is you don't get to a point where you stop being godly you have to sustain the momentum like jesus did hebrews chapter 12 from verses 1 down to verse 4 he said wherefore saying we also are compassed about with many cloud of witnesses we are com we are having all around us people who are looking at us let us lay aside every weight and every sin that doth easily beset us and let us run the race with patience that is set before us looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross it is a race it's a lifelong race enduring the cross despising the shame they were mocking him he didn't mind they were laughing at him he didn't care but now after he endured he is set at the right hand of the throne of god that is where you will end your journey i said that is where you will end your journey you will end your journey at the right hand of the throne of god iniquity will not cut down your journey where others are falling you'll be flying up but quickly this morning again we want to look at the nature of sin because it's important for you to know the the influence of sin as we can see from scriptures number one sin is forceful sin is forceful sin comes with a force to pull you down sin is a weapon of the devil to hinder relationship between god and his children I'd like you to quickly know this when god called you satan marked you when god called you to glory to blessing satan marked you for destruction and for downfall when he saw how god made man in the garden of eden he set into motion how to bring this man down from his enviable position in the garden into the wilderness why because satan always pursued the precious people the precious according to proverbs chapter 6 verse 26 the adulteress seeketh for the precious Homes for the precious you are precious in the sight of god that's why sin is haunting for you for by means of a warish woman a man is brought to a piece of bread and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life he will she will hunt for the precious life 
Satan is always hunting for us because he knows our enviable position with God. Let me quickly show to you a positive example and on the other side, a negative example. Look at Joseph, for instance. In Genesis chapter 37, from verses 5 to 11, we don't have the time to read, Joseph had a dream. As a matter of fact, he had the dream twice. He had, he had great dreams of greatness. His brethren hated him, and they envied him for his dream. And then in the process, they sold him out as slave to Potiphar. And right there in Potiphar's house, as he was busy going about his business, from verse 7, behold, in verse 7, chapter 39, his master's wife, Potiphar's wife, set her eyes on him. I'd like you to take note of that, please. Cast her eyes upon Joseph. He, she was very desperate. Satan was walking through that woman to get him. And she said, lie with me. She cast her eyes on him. And verse 8. Joseph refused. Say with me, I refuse. Why must you refuse? Because you are running a vision. Satan is attacking your vision. But he refused. And said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master wanted not what is with me in the house. He trusts me. And he had committed all that he had to my hands. And verse 9. There is none greater in this house than I. Neither up. He kept back anything from me but thee. Because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And then verse 10. Furthermore, it came to pass as she spake to Joseph day by day. Say with me, day by day. We are tempted day by day. Satan is pursuing you day by day. Look at that. That he hearkened not to her. She was pressing day by day. Joseph was resisting day by day. He hearkened not unto her to lie with her or be with her. Then in verse 11. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business. And there was none of the men of the house there wearing. And she caught him by force. She caught him. By his coming, saying, Lie with me. Joseph said, I would rather lose my garment than lose my destiny. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. Sin is desperate. You must be desperate. Sin is desperate for your soul. You must be desperate for your soul. You must be desperate for your escape. Iran! Not many people are running away from sin today. You hear people say, but you know, I, I, I couldn't help it. I couldn't help it. You know man's weakness now. When you are in such situation, I mean, what will you do now? What do you expect me to do? I expect you to run. <laughs> the Bible says flee all appearances of evil flee 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 second Timothy chapter 2 verse 23 flee flee chapter 2 verse 22 and 23 flee flee first Thessalonians chapter 5 abstain from all appearances of evil flee abstain flee abstain On the other hand, look at Samson. Samson also had a great plan of God for his life. From Judges chapter 13, verses 2 to 5. 
an angel of the Lord appeared unto the mother and said to her, I know you are barren. You have not born a son, but you will conceive and bear a son. And then in verse 4, he said, Hey, beware. Don't drink any wine or strong drink and eat not an unclean thing. And make sure that when that child is born, no razor come to his head. For the child shall be a Nazareth unto God from his womb. He shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Look at the great plan that God has upon him. From that day, Satan was at it. At it. I must get this fellow. And then finally, out of carelessness, unlike what Joseph did, he did not resist. He did not refuse. And then in Judges chapter 16, from verse 16, Judges 16, verse 16, it came to pass when the harlot pressed him daily. Can you see the similarity? Day by day, daily. She pressed him daily with her words and urged him. So his soul was vexed unto death. There was no time that Samson resisted. That he told her all his heart. And said unto her, there hath not come a razor upon my head. For I have been a Nazareth from, unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me. And I shall become weak and be like any other man. She pressed on him. And then the following verse. When Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the Lord of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he has shewed me all his heart. Then the Lord of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hand. And verse 19, And she made them to sleep upon her knees. A great giant fell asleep the sleep of slumber the spirit of slumber came up. she slept upon her knees and then she took razor she called for a man and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head and she began to afflict him and his strength went from him his strength went from him and the following verse you saw what happened and she said the philistines be upon this i'm saying and he awoke out of his sleep and said i will go out as other times before and shake myself and he wished not that the Lord was departed from him. When God calls you, Satan marks you. The reason you are being pursued by the enemy is because there is a plan of God upon your life that must be fulfilled. Watch out. Watch out. Don't mess up. Don't sell out. Don't give in to the enemy. Sin is forceful. It's forceful. Solomon was narrating an experience in Proverbs chapter 7, verse 21. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 21. You can read that the chapter, the entire chapter. He was talking about a foolish man, how he was going around and a, one harlot caught him. Proverbs 7, 21. With a much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. She forced him. Beware, young ladies, beware, young men, of flattery tongues, flattery lips. Beware of some men who go about brandishing car key in front of you, brandishing dollars and pounds before, before you, and your body is shaking. Will you follow me? Yeah, I'll follow you. I'll follow you. Beware! Beware. Sin is forceful. Beware of beauty. Beauty is good. As a matter of fact, God wants us to be beautiful because He is beautiful. He is beautiful. Our God is beautiful and He wants us to be beautiful. As a matter of fact, He asks us to dress for glory and beauty. But there are beauty of the world that leads to sin. Watch your eyes. Watch your eyes. Do not behold things that will cause your feet to fall. I love to meet with beautiful children of God. But when it is going to lead to sin, I take to my heels. I take to my heels. I run for my life. There are certain situations that the anointing cannot help you. You have to run. You have to run. You run. She caught him. Raise your hand and say with me, I will not be caught up by evil. Number two, sin is addictive. It's addictive. 
for the women sin is luring sin comes to lure people as bait to catch fish if you have been in a river on a sea before to catch fish you don't throw the naked what do you call it hook you have to cover the hook with bait and the ignorant fish that does not know that there is danger in the bait um, 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 oak. <laughs> so you are caught sin is luring james chapter 1 verses 13 to 15 look at what the bible says there let no man say when he's tempted i'm tempted of god for god cannot be tempted with evil neither does he tempt any man it's not the one who tells people verse 14 but every man is tempted when he is lured when he is drawn away of his own loss and is enticed then when lost as conceived it bringeth forth sin and sin when it is finished it becomes an addiction it becomes an addiction it becomes a bondage one man say to you take little wine if you don't receive it at that point you will soon become addicted to drinking it begins with a little sheep then a little glass and a little cup and a little bottle to 12 bottles watch it don't be lured into sin don't be lured into sin it begins with a little kiss say kiss me now that's where it begins from abstain from all appearances of evil i used to tell young people that will marry themselves what you will do for life why must you be stealing it why must you be stealing the food you know you will eat all your life you will now go to the kitchen and steal it let me steal small you steal small you take small when that is the food you will eventually eat the relationship you will have with your spouse for life why must you be stealing to fornicate why must you be stealing to fornicate here and there beware now how do you conquer this nature of sin this is where exercise comes in simply put in sports how do you conquer six feet height in a high jump what do you do exercise you leap over four feet you leap over four five four and a half you leap over five then you leap over five and a half and then you are exercising yourself to leap over six you are exercising yourself it is exercise that brings excellence you will be tempted but you have to exercise yourself no like joseph did he refused but this is not possible in our human flesh it's not possible in our human flesh what do you do therefore you must engage the ministry of the holy spirit you must engage the ministry of the holy spirit please note there is evil spirit and there is holy spirit the root of sin is evil spirit the root of holiness is holy spirit if you have evil spirit you will find yourself in sin if you have holy spirit you find yourself living holy so the more you are filled with the holy spirit the less evil spirit will have power over you the holy spirit is the spirit of holiness romans chapter 1 verse 4 and therefore it takes the holy spirit to subdue evil spirit it takes the holy spirit to subdue evil spirit isaiah 59 verse 19 when the enemy shall come as a flood the spirit of the lord will lift up a standard against them but access to the holy spirit or access to the power of the holy spirit is by prayer 
access to the power of the holy spirit is by prayer acts chapter 1 verse 8 you shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you so the holy ghost is the fountain of power and if that power must come down they went to prayer verse 14 of the same chapter chapter 1 verse 14 of after apostle this all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the woman and mary the mother of jesus and with his brethren and chapter 2 verse 1 as they continued in prayer they were together in one accord when the day of pentecost came and verse 2 what happened suddenly there came a sound from heaven as if russian mighty wind and it filled the house where they were sitting and they were filled they appeared on them the cloven tongues of fire and it sat upon each of them fire comes down when we are in prayer and they were filled with the holy ghost and they spake with other tongues as the holy spirit gave them the utterance let me go over that again evil spirit holy spirit the master conqueror the master conqueror of evil spirit is the holy spirit but the holy spirit does not come without prayer it is in prayer that we bring down the power of the holy ghost Acts of the apostle chapter 4 verse 31 and when they had prayed the place where they prayed shook and when they had prayed the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the holy ghost and they spake the word of god with boldness they were emboldened to overcome evil spirit as they prayed that's why you cannot separate prayerfulness from holiness those who pray usually experience power to live holy prayerlessness is what opens door to temptation matthew 26 41 watch and pray lest you fall into temptation satan will have you prayerless so he can catch you you are at your weak points when you are prayerless and you are at your power point when you are prayerful especially when you pray in the holy ghost you are securing power to overcome sin shout hallelujah number two how do you conquer the nature of sin by engaging in continuous fellowship continuous fellowship with the saints fellowship with the brethren is a spiritual buffer it's a spiritual buffer it creates a shield to reduce danger of falling away you will agree with me you start backsliding when you stop attending fellowship they say brother won't you go to church he said not today the following day brother won't you go to church i'm feeling weak in my body the third day brother i want to go to church i'm not even interested again fellowship hebrews chapter 3 verse 3 verse 13 rather hebrews chapter 3 verse 13 the place of fellowship cannot be overemphasized but exhort one another daily why it is called today fellowship is a place of exhortation it's a place of encouragement chapter 10 verse 25 of hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 he said forsake not the gathering the assembling of yourself of, one of, of, of ourselves as the manner of some is as the manner of some is you will not be one of those, those such people again but exhorting one another and so much more as ye see the day approaching psalm 84 verse 7 they go from strength to strength every one of them that appear before the lord in zion fellowship is a place of building up of your spiritual strength it's a place where your the, your brethren encourage you to remain in the face How do you conquer the nature of sin? Number three, project your faith anywhere you go to. Let people know you to be born again. Let them know you to be a child of God. Because 
If you hide your faith, you will lose your faith. If you hide your faith, you will lose your faith. Project your faith. Many of us are tempted because we don't want people to think that we are Christians. Some even say, I don't want anybody to think I'm a fanatic. Some say, you know, business is business, church is church. There is nothing like church first before business. Church first before your work. You may lose your work, but don't lose God. Don't lose church. There are people who can't carry their Bible openly. They can't carry their Bible openly. They put their Bible inside newspaper. There are people that can't tell their friends, I'm going to church. They ask him, where are you going to? He says, I'm going somewhere there. I'm going somewhere there. Because he doesn't want people to laugh at him. Is that Christianity? If you hide your faith, you will lose your faith. Your defense from sin is let people know where you belong to. They serve you wine. Don't say, I don't like it. Tell them, I'm a child of God, I don't drink. Tell them straight. In my journeys, local, international, I sit in appropriate class where I should sit, where anything and everything is available. They say, will you want wine? No. I'm a child of God. I don't tell them I don't want. I, I'm a child of God. Don't you like to be a child of God? I ask them. They serve you wine. You look this way, that way. Nobody is saying you are blessed. You are hiding your Christianity. When I travel, I bring out my Bible. Because I paid for my seat. If you are angry and change your seat, my Bible will occupy your seat. Don't hide your faith if you don't want to lose your faith. Don't fail to let people know you are a child of God. I'm a child of God. I don't do that. I don't do that. You let them know where you stand. Shout hallelujah. And as I close, what are the benefits of godliness? Number one, godliness is fountain of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord. Proverbs chapter 1, I think verse 9 out there. Is the beginning of wisdom. Psalm 25, verse 14. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And he will shew them his covenant. Proverbs 1, 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction look at joseph joseph refused sin joseph feared god genesis 42 18 and in chapter 41 verse 38 the secret was revealed unto him joseph a man who feared god became joseph the wise he gained access to the secrets of god that led to his exploit Number two benefits or wonders of godliness. Godliness gives you access to unction. It gives you access to the anointing. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 8. Let your garment be white and let not your head lack the ointment. Ointment means anointing. Garment means purity. So purity begets power. Purity begets power. Impurity destroys power. Impurity is pollutant to power. Today I decree that as you partake of this communion, every trace of ungodliness, of unrighteousness shall be destroyed from your life. Did I hear somebody say loud amen to that? As you take this communion today, Every trace of ungodliness shall be destroyed from your life. Give God a big hand, everybody. Hallelujah. From the word you have had tonight, this morning, you need to make a decision. 
you need to make a decision. Any word of God that does not lead you to a decision is a wasted word. Decision. Decision. Somebody is seated here this morning, you know you are at the verge of hell. You know it. That you are heading for hell the way your life is. You must make a decision this morning for Jesus to rescue you. Somebody is drowning in a sea this morning. I have thrown to you the life wire, the saving line for you to be saved. Don't harden your heart. Don't get drowned before you try to change your mind. You know you are not born again. You know you have been living in sin. I'm not saying this to condemn you. I'm saying this to make you see yourself the way you are. You need to be born again. You need to run to Jesus. Stop wasting your life. What Satan is calling enjoyment to you is suffering. It will soon show. Don't wait till the time when you will start suffering. Open up your heart to him this morning. Receive him as your Lord and as your Savior. I'm standing here this morning to pray with you, to pray for you. And Jesus will save you. Some other persons, you know you are once born again, but you are backsliding or you are backsliding gradually. The things you vowed never to do again are the things you are doing. The things you have stopped doing before are the things you are going back to do. You are like a dog going back to his vomit. But this morning you can return home because Jesus does not condemn anybody. He wants to receive you back. He wants to forgive you. You want to rededicate your life back to him. Stand to your feet. I want to pray for you. If you're in any of these categories, by the authority in the name of Jesus, I command that no devil will deceive you this morning. You want to become free. Like that brother Monday, Annie. You have been addicted to smoking, addicted to drinking. Ask yourself, what am I gaining from this? You can be free this morning. Stand to your feet. All of you who are standing up, I'd like you to take whatever you came to church with and start coming to the altar here right now. I want to pray for you. Start coming right now. Start coming. Start coming. Hasten your step. We have limited time this morning. You want to be saved. You want to be born again. You want to be restored back to the faith. If you are backsliding, come quickly. Come quickly. Church, get excited as we receive them right now. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. If you are still seated there, you know you should be out here. By the authority in the name of Jesus, I bind every spirit of indecision that may be holding you down right now. I command every devil trying to hold you down to leave you alone now. You must be free. Today is your day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time. Run, 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 run down here now. You are still seated there. You have no choice this morning but to be saved. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There are still individuals who are seated there. Maybe you are trying to justify yourself. You know, I don't drink, I don't smoke. I don't do all those stuff that that man is talking about. But the Bible says that your righteousness is as filthy rags. If you say you have no sin, you are deceiving yourself and the truth is not in you. You know why? That peace you lack, that joy that is far from you, is an indication that you need Jesus. There is a vacuum inside you that must be filled. Only Jesus can fill it. That hunger in your soul, that place is reserved only for Jesus. You can't drink to satisfy it. You can't smoke to satisfy it. No matter what you are smoking. You may be smoking everything. You are simply smoking away your life. Wherever you are seated, you still need to stand up to be here. Now, quickly stand up. I'm waiting for you to receive this call right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. While we are waiting for the others to come, please make sure the books of the month are for your reading. Pick them up and be blessed as you do so. The miracles I read for the week is also out. Understanding the wonders of godliness. It will be a You are blessed. You are saved. It's a new day for you. Take a turn to go after our church officials to the right or to the left. Quickly do that and God bless you. Clap your hands for them, church. Hallelujah. Praise God. Please rise to your feet, everybody. And communion stewards, please quickly take position right now.
We are running for time. We have just a few more minutes to go before we close the service. Please don't be in a hurry to go. After the communion, I will still be praying prophetic prayer over your life, especially for your marital destiny to be fulfilled. Don't be in a hurry to go. Now, I'd like you to lift up your hand and speak to God. Let the blood of Jesus cleanse me right now. Let this communion put a taste for God in my heart. Let this communion destroy taste for sin. Let this communion destroy taste for unrighteousness. Communion steward, please quickly take position. Take position very fast. Let this communion destroy every trace of sin, every trace of unrighteousness. By this communion, I receive a fresh taste for righteousness, for holiness. Speak right now. Speak out loud. Speak out loud. Speak out loud. To express your desperation. Speak out loud. Pray also that by this communion, every sickness in your body will be destroyed. Poverty will be destroyed. Failure will be destroyed. Barriers will be destroyed. Raise your voice, somebody. Make your proclamation. Make your declaration. Take what belongs to you right now. Take what belongs to you right now. It is yours for the taking. It is yours for the taking. It is yours for the taking. Don't keep quiet. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Now, I decree that by this communion this morning, the nature of sin be destroyed from you in the name of Jesus. As you take this communion today, I release upon you the Holy Ghost strength that will enable you to live above sin in the name of Jesus. Receive this blessing today. By this communion, every sickness, disease, affliction, whatever it may be called, every enigma in your life, in your body, in your family, every trace of failure, every trace of affliction, every nightmare, every affliction, every marital spell, be destroyed from you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' precious name. Please get seated and take your turn as you'll be guided, directed. Please, as you are taking this coming on, take it by faith. Take it strong. Take it committedly. Take it by faith. Coming on, Stewart, please move with speed. Move with speed. Move with speed towards your serving points. God bless you. God bless you. Make your declaration as you are taking the coming on. And after you have taken yours, celebrate Jesus and be giving him the glory.